Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for coming back. It's so good to see you. You look beautiful today. I hope you are having an amazing day. Good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. Let's get into the video. I'm lighting my amazing Dracula candle by Noble Objects that my girlfriend got for me. The scent is called Sunrise and it is like this lovely, like orange, beautiful candle. I'm not sponsored, but I just wanted to flex this nice horror candle on everybody. So yeah, welcome back. I'm doing a little new fun thing with the background now. We got some flowers. We got a candle. Maybe it's doing a little too much. Maybe, maybe it's a little extra, but I think that's okay. We're just trying out new things. Today, I will be doing the mid-year book freakout tag. It is almost the end of July, but I think all of my videos are late, so I don't think that's anything new. So hopefully this is still applicable to the time of year. Maybe, who knows what time it'll be by the time I edit this. Maybe it'll be August. It doesn't matter. It is the middle of the year for me and I'm freaking out. I was not tagged by anyone because nobody knows who I am, but that's okay. That's fine. I'm just, I'm just doing my own thing. The first question is, what is the best book you've read in 2021? Just to start this off, I am going to be like bending the rules a little probably. I don't know if there are any rules. I'm gonna have a few answers for some of these questions because I have very varied tastes and I like a lot of things. But there are three books that really stand out. Uh, the first one is Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I read this about a month ago and it was so good. It was an immediate five star. I knew from like a quarter of the way through that it was gonna be one of my new favorite books. The family drama aspect of it was just so well done. I was so engrossed in all of the characters. I really wanted to see how this was gonna end. It had like almost a thriller aspect to it because at the beginning it is revealed that the night ends in a fire. And it, that part of the story might have been a little anticlimactic, but it just put this like undercurrent to the entire story of like, what's gonna happen? How is this all gonna end? So I really enjoyed this book. It is just one of my favorite things that I've read all year. It kept me so engaged the entire time. I didn't wanna put it down. I just wanted to talk about it to everyone that I knew. And I love Taylor Jenkins Reid. I am gonna read anything that she puts out. All three of her books have been a five star from me. I have two other best books that I've read in 2021. It's just hard for me to pick between the three of these, especially because they're such different genres. My next favorite book that I read was The Library Book by Susan Orlean. This book was perfect. I just keep coming back to it. And I can't believe the first time initially right after I read it, I rated it a four star. And then I, it just kept coming back. I kept thinking about it and it really influences me every day, just in how I feel about the world around me and my fucking, just my fondness for libraries. After reading this book, I mean, okay, I loved libraries before. I maybe want to be a librarian one day. That's one of my potential careers. And I, I already knew I wanted that before reading this book. But oh my god, just like, Every time I walk past a library now, like my heart gets all soft and I'm just like, oh my God, do you remember in the library book when Susan Orlean talked about how libraries are so much more than books. They're also such an important community space and it's just such a beautiful moment where so many different kinds of people interact with each other and some you'd never see it in normal society. And it's just like, it's a beautiful book. It is really entertaining. I have recommended it to so many people since reading it. 
and it really impacts me in every day of my life. I think about it all the time. So if you haven't read The Library Book by Susan Orlean, you should definitely check it out. So my third favorite book that I have read in 2021 is True Crime by Samantha Kolsnick. I've talked about all three of these in my most recent video, so if you want more information, check that out. But oh my fucking god, this book was so good. It's a novella, which I also have not tried really until recently. And it was just every single page packed a punch. Like every page of it was gruesome and thought provoking and just had so much to say about cycles of abuse and femininity and hating your own femininity after abuse and just oh it was so good it it was so good i would recommend going into it not knowing that much but if you have just started horror i would not recommend this to you because it is really intense and really disturbing but if you love horror and you feel like you've kind of ran out of things to read because you've read all the popular stuff, fucking check this book out. It will, it'll, it'll get you. It was really good. It was disturbing and gross and upsetting, but also weirdly emotional and thought provoking. And I don't know, it just, it made me feel some type of way. Would definitely recommend. Question number two is the best sequel you've read so far in 2021. I've read 53 books this year and I haven't read a sequel. I just don't really care for sequels that much. The only recent sequel I can remember reading is last year. I read the two other books in the Southern Reach trilogy by Jeff Vandermeer. I hated them. They were not good. And so that kind of turned me off of sequels. But most of the books I read are just one-offs. And I haven't really had the opportunity to read a sequel in a while. I'm not completely opposed to it. And I would like to try it soon. But I just kind of want to have let it happen organically. None of the books that I love have sequels. So. No. Question three. New release you haven't read yet, but you want to. You're gonna hear this name a lot in this video. I have a copy of the Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix on the way right now. I just ordered it this morning. I just, Grady Hendrix is one of my favorite authors, but new books are expensive, so I hadn't bought it yet, but I decided I deserved it, so I ordered it this morning. So. I cannot wait to read The Final Girl Support Group. Uh, he also wrote My Best Friend's Exorcism and The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. And those are two of my favorite books. So I'm really, really excited to get around to it. I just know I'm gonna love it. Question four is my most anticipated release for the second half of the year. And that would be My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones. The only book I've read by him is The Only Good Indians. I really need to get around to his other stuff, but I loved that book. It was a five star. It's definitely up there with some of my favorite books that I've read this year. And I just like him as a writer a lot. I need to check out his other stuff too. I just haven't because it costs money. I can't find it on Libby or anything like that. so. Usually I get around to things that I have to pay for later. So, taking a horror class next semester, and I think we might read it. So I'm really excited about that. He is definitely a new author that I'm watching out for. I really enjoy his work. Question five is the biggest disappointment of the year. Okay. The Deep by Nick Cutter is still one of the worst books I've ever read. He wrote The Troop, which was a five star. I loved that book. But oh my fucking god, The Deep was so bad. And it definitely, okay, maybe it wasn't one of the worst books I've ever read, but definitely one of the most disappointing things I've ever, I've ever even looked at. It was so bad. It was misogynistic. It was fat phobic. It was boring and it was stupid. 
I ranted about that in another video, so if you want to hear more, uh, some more reasons why I didn't like it, check it out. I also have some runner-ups for this category, and I feel like, ow, go away. I'm gonna put her away, that hurts so bad. I also just finished a book the other day called The Devil and Man King by Mo Hader. Something about this book was just really off to me. In premise, I thought it sounded really interesting. It is about a woman that is trying to figure out more about the massacre in Nanking. And she travels to Japan and is trying to find this lost videotape that she read about in a book one day when she was younger and thought that she made up and it was just like supposedly like the most horrific act from Nanking. But the more I got into this book, it just started to sit really wrong with me. The author is a white woman and it was just really weird in my opinion. It felt really weird for this woman to be writing about the Nanking massacre, which is an awful fucking event that I just, I don't think it was right for her to fictionalize this and write from the perspective of Chinese characters in the Nanking Massacre. That was just weird to me. I, I didn't like that. And I also felt like there was a lot of fetishization of Japanese culture and Chinese culture. So, that was just not, not good. Did not like that. Very disappointing. I thought it would be good. And uh, I realized it was a white author like halfway through the book. And honestly, I should have DNF'd there because something about that just did not sit right with me. Question six is the biggest surprise this year. And I would have to give that to The Ruins by Scott Smith. I only gave this four stars because I don't think it was a perfect book, but it really surprised me. I went into it not really knowing anything about it, and it scared the shit out of me. I talked about it more in one of my wrap-ups, I think maybe my March wrap-up, and it was really disturbing, and it was really scary, and there are some scenes about it that I still think about to this day that, like, <laughs> give me chills. I don't know, if, if you've read it, you know what I'm talking about, like, the, the mine shaft or whatever and the some of the like those parts i don't want to give too much away it was disturbing it was almost like a body horror at times and it just really surprised me i did not expect to be so disturbed by it i just i didn't give it a five star because it just didn't check all the boxes but i would highly recommend it to any horror fans if you haven't checked it out the movie is bad though, so don't watch that. But the book was really good. Question seven is your favorite new author, and that can either be a debut or a new to you. So I'm gonna pick a new to me author, and that is Michael McDowell. I'd never even heard of him until I started watching Jordaline Reads. She recommends him in like every other video. So I decided I should check him out. He is an author from the 80s. I had never heard of him, but then I found out that he wrote the screenplay of Beetlejuice, which is a movie that I've loved for like my entire life. So I was really excited to check him out. I read Cold Moon Over Babylon and The Amulet by him, and they were both really good. I Neither of them got a five star, but that doesn't mean that I didn't enjoy them. It was just some really solid 80s horror. They were both super fun. Uh, the amulet, definitely more fun. It was gory and I loved the main character and it was just a crazy story about this amulet that gets passed around this town and everyone that puts it on kills somebody. They kill somebody, they kill themselves. It was, it was a crazy read. It's this southern town in the 80s that is just plagued by this mysterious amulet and our main character is trying to hunt it down and destroy it. And it was just a really fun read. So I definitely recommend that if you are into 80s horror. His other book, Cold Moon Over Babylon, is a southern gothic horror. 
that he was also written in the 80s about this girl that's murdered and her ghost comes back to just wreak havoc on this entire little town and everyone that hurt her. So he has kind of mastered the southern gothic horror little subsection. So I really enjoyed it. I love the South. I've lived in the South for most of my life. So Michael McDowell has been great to read. It has all of the fun and elements of retro horror, but it also has a lot of substance behind it and it's really well written. So I would highly recommend Michael McDowell if you haven't checked him out yet. Question eight is your newest fictional crush. I don't really get fictional crushes. I read a lot of horror. If you, if you haven't figured that out, I kind of like horror, but a lot of the characters in horror are bad people. Like just straight up like unattractive in the fact that they are bad people. I think I should read more queer lit maybe so I can kind of develop some fictional crushes, but honestly, like I couldn't think of anybody. So boring, but sorry. Question nine is your newest favorite character, and I would have to go with Sarah from The Amulet, which I just talked about. She was just such a bad bitch. She started off as like this meek little housewife. She got married when she was like 20, and she didn't really like her husband, and she didn't really like her factory job, but she was just content with life, not wanting to upset anybody. But the events of The Amulet turn her into a bad bitch. By the end, she does some crazy shit and she doesn't care. Like, she was just so cool. And I loved this cute little Southern housewife turned bitch that will do whatever she needs to do to get what she wants. And I really loved her. Question 10 is a book that made you cry. And this was no contest. My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix made me fucking cry. The end, which I'm not going to give much away, but when they're talking about Haley's Comet. So I just realized it's Hallie's Comet, not Haley's Comet. So I just ignore that, please. Like, it still gives me like chills because of how... Just the female friendship in this book was so good. I don't know, just the relationship between the two main girls was just so beautiful. And just seeing them overcome all of these crazy obstacles and just still together in the end. And oh my God, Haley's Comet. He really, Grady Hendrix really got me with that. I do not know how a straight white cis man can write these two teenage girls so well and so relatably. I don't know how he did it. So props to him for that because, oh my God, did this book make me cry. I was listening to the audiobook and I remember I was at work at my school and I was crying <laughs> like in the middle of work <laughs> and I had to like go into the bathroom to calm down a little, but oh my God. It was so good and it was so sad at the end, but in like a bittersweet, beautiful kind of way. If you haven't read My Best Friend's Exorcism and you enjoy horror or 80s horror, as I've been talking about, fucking check this one out. It will not disappoint. Question 11 is a book that made you happy. And I would have to go with uh, The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. This is an obvious one. Everyone has read this book at this point. This book was just so sweet and I read it during finals week at school when I was depressed and it was just the perfect thing to get me out of that funk and to give me some hope and give me it gave me like a sense of community. It did make me cry too, but more importantly it made me happy. And thank you TJ Klune for that boost of serotonin when I needed it the most. Question 12 is the most beautiful book that you bought or received this year. And I'm lazy. It is in the other room, but I'm just going to put it up on screen. And this is Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer. This is one of my favorite books of all time. 
Uh, I did not own a copy until about a couple weeks ago because I don't like to buy things. <laughs> I hate spending money. And I read Annihilation on my Kindle through Libby and I felt like that was enough. But it was one of my favorite books. So I saw it at the fucking thrift store the other day and I bought it and I was, I'm so happy about it. It's not the most striking cover, but something about it is just really satisfying to me. I love the colors in it and it helps that it's one of my favorite books. So Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer. And I'm so happy that I finally own a copy of it. I'm hoping to reread it soon. The last question, question 13, is what books do you need to read by the end of the year? And I mean, I wanna go through my whole TBR for this. There are so many books that I want to read, but I want to talk about some ones that I've been meaning to get around to for a long time. I don't know that much about any of these books, except general premise. So I'm just gonna kind of go through them really quick. I really wanna read The Elementals by Michael McDowell. It is a Southern Gothic, it's about two families that don't like each other, I think. Sounds good, I'm in. Normal People by Sally Rooney. I thought I wasn't interested in this, but one of my favorite YouTubers, Uncarly, talked about Sally Rooney in like every video, so I really wanna check it out. I think I might like it. I'm getting more into literary fiction. Another recommendation from Carly is Such a Fun Age. I, this is another book that I didn't think I was that interested in until I've heard more people talk about it and now I really want to get around to it. I really want to read A Cosmology of Monsters by Sean Hamill. That is another beautiful cover that I've bought this year. I am also reading that in my contemporary horror class. We're actually going to have Sean Hamill speaking at it. So I might just leave it for the class or I might read it early. So I really wanna get around to that because I've heard that it is really good, the cover is amazing, and it's about monsters. I love monsters. I really wanna read One Last Stop. I do not remember the author's name, but it's gay. My friend Grace, I love you Grace, has said that it is really good and lesbians. I need to read more romance, so I've never really given it a shot, but I think the place to do it is with lesbians. I really want to read Off Season by Jack Ketchum. I've heard that it is one of the most graphic, gory books ever written. So I'm there. Want to read it. Cannibals. Love cannibals. Moving on. Last but not least, my most anticipated book on this list is House of Leaves by Mark L. Danielewski. I think that's how you pronounce it. I've been wanting to read this book for so long. It's a big book. I brought it along on my summer vacation. I decided that wasn't really my summer vibe. I don't want to be like haunted by a book and have to read it every second of the day. So I'm going to save that for the fall. I'll already be depressed because school. So might as well just throw that on top of everything. But House of Leaves is definitely my most anticipated uh, not new release that I need to read. I. It just is right up my alley. I've read the first like 20 pages of it and I had to chill out because it affected me a lot. And I'm really excited to dig into it. I think it's gonna be one of those books that like, even though it's huge, I think I'm gonna finish it in a few days because I'm just gonna need to know what happens. Honestly, I would really like to do a reading vlog for it. So if you're interested in that at all, comment down below. And that is the tab. That is my mid-year book freakout. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for staying till the end. And I hope you have a great day. Any recommendations you have based off of these? And what are some of your favorite books that you've read this year? I would love to know. What are, your, what are the biggest disappointments you've had this year? I love talking shit about bad books. Put it in the comments. Like if you enjoyed this video, subscribe if you feel like it and you want to see more of me. And thank you for watching. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Bye.